Good morning, everyone. We welcome you to LACNIC 40, LACNOC 2023, the event that uh, gathers uh, the internet community of Latin America and the Caribbean. I'm Laura Kaplan. I will be the master of ceremonies this morning. I'm a member of staff. Let me tell you a bit what today is going to be like. We'll start with the opening ceremony. Then we're going to have two panels, submarine cables, growth and regional infrastructure. And uh, afterwards, we're going to have cost sharing, sending party pays, fair share, and their impact on the internet. This afternoon, we'll have the opening of LACNOC, and the first block will be a presentation of technical papers. Before we start with uh, the opening ceremony, let me remind you that as is the case in all of the meetings here in this room, uh, we'll have simultaneous translations, Spanish, uh, English, and Portuguese. For those of you uh, online, you'll be able to access uh, in the, the lower two. Uh, you, you can access uh, trans. Uh, um, uh, the interpretation services in the toolbar that is at the bottom of the Zoom uh, screen. And uh, if not, you have to, if you are here in person, you have to request uh, your headset. Let me invite Edmundo Casanes, and Deputy President of uh, the Board, Demdeco, the President of uh, BR, and Evaldo Varonil of uh, the Board of LACNIC. So, let me start by giving the floor to Edmundo Casares. Good morning. Thank you, Laura. Good morning, everyone. It's an honor to be here and to welcome uh, experts uh, and uh, our champions and uh, the companies. We are welcoming you to the uh, LACNOC meeting. LACNOC is not just uh, a gathering, but it's a confluence of ideas, a platform for exchanging views, and especially it's a space where Latin America and the Caribbean get together for a more inclusive, uh, secure, and resilient digital world. And these uh, our times, the need of cooperation in uh, the uh, community of network operators has never been so important. Networks are absolutely crucial to our modern society, and it is our task uh, to make it robust, secure, and uh, accessible to all. This year, the program of the event is full of uh, um, exciting works that uh, uh, including IPv6, sec cybersecurity, routing, IXPs, RPKI, XLAN, IXLAN, uh, network infrastructure, and connectivity markets. However, <coughs> what really defines LACNOC is its community. You here are the very heart of this movement. Each of you, with uh, your experience, perspective, and passion, contributes to this collective mesh. During this event, Brazil is hosting us, and we will be holding our first uh, uh, assembly of members after being uh, created last year. That's another important hallmark in our history. That is why I insist uh, that uh, you share your ideas, learn from others, establish new collaborations, and reignite old ones. Remember that each panel, each technical session is an opportunity to build a better and more brilliant future uh, future for our region. I want to thank all those that make this event possible, the sponsors, the organizers, volunteers, and of course, all the participants, because together we are building a legacy that will go beyond this event and will be for the benefit of the region. I especially want to thank our programs committee, uh, headed by Jorge Villa. This work has worked very hard. It wouldn't have been possible to fill the agenda without them. And in the agenda, you will find discussions and tutorial about 
are the topics that will help us face the challenges, uh, the everyday challenges. Much of the LACNAC event would not be possible without the continuous support of the staff of LACNIC, represented by Oscar Robles. Our uh, thanks to all of them. And finally, I wanted to thank our manager, Lia Solis, and the group of volunteers that work tirelessly to prepare our activities. I hope this is a productive, inspiring and uh, event uh, full of collaboration. Thank you. Thank you, Edmundo. Now, <coughs> we invite Demi Getko. Good morning, everyone. I want to thank the invitation. Uh, thank you for inviting me. Uh, for, 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 uh, I want to thank Laknik. I have nothing specific to say, but it's very good to be in this community and to see again people that I've known for quite a while. And I realized that the password uh, is goes back to 2022. That shows how stable this event is. And I wanted to tell you the following. It's a, a bit nostalgic, uh, maybe, because we are here in this room. And I remember when I was a, a technician at the time, uh, uh, and now I, I'm quite obsolete, but we were the hardcore of uh, the internet community. That's what we called it at the time. I don't know whether there's such a thing, an internet community, but it did exist in my time. We defended the principles of the network and also the permanence of the network as it was. Furthermore, we, we used to say that we had to be liberal in our actions and what we accept, but also conservative. We have the principle. Uh, we share David Clark's principle, that is, that we needed to adapt uh, to, uh, and we uh, are convinced of uh, well-written codes. Those are areas uh, of the technical, those are technical things of the internet, and here we are um, uh, implementing that. And I wanted to remind you of something specific. John Perry Barlow, in 1996, who also died, wrote the Declaration of Independence of Cyberspace that may sound a bit romantic or even uh, a bit of a dream, but at the time it represented the internet community, whatever it was at the time and whatever it is now. But it represented that concept. And at the time, the internet community had a very important reaction at the time. And in Brazil, we had a case, the so-called Sicarelli case, that uh, generated a suspension in YouTube. The internet community reacted, and one, uh, a week later, it was available again, because there was uh, they were showing a video that they didn't like, and they suspended. But that led to the uh, development of a dec decalogus. And it was the way we could position ourselves when there was an abuse of power or a legal action. So we have the capacity of giving advice under these cases. So we might be losing this concept of a community that should work automatically to defend an internet that is not fragmented, that is open to all, collaborative, and precisely those are the origins of this network when we uh, when ARPANET generated IPs all over, and we had those phrases in our T-shirts. So I'm very happy to see that the community is getting together. This is a solid community that, uh, uh, um, and I was talking to Oscar Robles, remembering the first meeting. We have the meetings of the NICs, the TLDs, that get together in like TLD with people from all over the world. And I think that it is very important to preserve all that. Likewise, I think that we should re-experience or uh, uh, reignite the concept of the internet community because not only are we part of this community, we are the core. I think that the internet community w I I wanted a long life so that we can preserve it uh, in the right path. Thank you all. Thank you, Demi. The next speaker is Evandro.
Good morning. I'd like to ask the Spanish public, public and the English speaking public to allow me to speak in Portuguese, which is my mother tongue. We have simultaneous interpretation, but even for those who speak Spanish, if I speak slowly, despacio, like they say in Spanish, this will be easier to understand. Because we now use tablets, I cannot show you the 50 pages I prepared to make my presentation. So don't, don't, don't be afraid. So, dear Edmundo, my colleague from Mexico, from Lacnog, my dear Professor Demi from Nick.br, who is a member of the Hall of Fame, and he, and together with Professor Glaser for many years, they were directors at LACNIC and with from whom we learned so much, and who's now also in the Hall of Fame of the Internet. So I'd also like to greet my friends from LACNIC's board with whom I have learned so much. I'm always learning so much. The directors of the sister organizations, the sponsors, and all the members and colleagues of that thriving co internet community of Latin America and the Caribbean who are gathered together in Fortaleza, or those who are following us also online. Now, what makes this event so special? This event, one of the things that makes it special is the people. The most important thing here, the most important of all other people, to give you just a couple of numbers, we have 736 members, uh, persons in present, and 545 remote participants. These numbers are constantly growing. So it is a great pleasure to be here today with you in Fortaleza, in the northeast of Brazil. This is the fourth largest city of the country in terms of population. We have 34 kilometers of beaches, and this is the city that is closest to Europe. That is why this is a hub of subsea cables that is very important in terms of internet infrastructure, not only for Brazil, but for the entire region as well. In addition to that, this is one of the most uh, sought for destinations for tourism. LACNIC, for many more than 21 years, have been organizing these itinerant meetings in Latin America and the Caribbean. This is to come closer and to encourage the participation of its members and the community. Let me give you a couple of more numbers. We have been already in 25 cities in 17 countries from the region. Our events, in our events, what we always seek to do networking, provide training, and improve the knowledge of those who wish to participate in the governance of the internet, not only in the region, but also in the world. That is why we are gathered here in Fortaleza. And in Fortaleza, this is the fifth event we have organized in Brazil to come close to the community. Let me remind you that the first LACNOG of our colleagues was organized here in Brazil in one of LACNIC's editions in Sao Paulo. And this is the fifth event in Brazil. The first was LACNIC 2 in Sao Paulo 2001. The second one's LACNIC 11 in El Salvador, in, in the city of Salvador in 2008. In 2010, we had LACNIC 14 once again in Sao Paulo, where I saw the first LACNOC organized together with LACNIC. That was 14 years ago, LACNIC 27. One of the record events in terms of attendance was held in Fosto Iwasu in 2017. And now we're in Fortaleza for fifth the fifth time in Brazil. And hopefully we'll be hosting this event more than five times, although we're always looking to host the event in different cities and in different countries of Latin America and the Caribbean region. I was fortunate to participate in three of the five events that were held in Brazil, in addition to many more events organized in the many different countries we have visited. All over those years, the event has continued to grow. Just to give you an idea, LACNIC 11, which was organized in the city of Salvador, Bahia in 2008, had 208 participants. So, 
at that time, it, if we now add the remote and the in-person participants, we have more than 1,000 participants. So we perceive the interest and the growth of this community, which I'm most thankful for. These meetings are highly valued for the participants and for the development and the growth of a more open internet. We are always encouraging networking and that is why we have a networking system that many of you already received the link through email. This is so that you register and participate in that system. And this is quite interesting. You can enter your information, you can enter your photograph. And this is quite interesting. So, and of course, being here in person is very helpful for networking purposes. Last, last night we had a cocktail, which was great. Now, speaking about interactivity and speaking about participation online, we have the social media. So, if you post anything in the social media, use the hashtag LACNIC40, LACNOC2023. I'd also like to invite you to visit LACNIC's booth on the first floor in the trade show. If you have any questions, if you would like to know anything else about LACNIC, we'll be there at LACNIC's booth to help you. Now, regarding the agenda, let me comment on some of the highlights we'll have this week. Laura already mentioned a couple of things. Now, let me give you my general overview and highlight some of the points. Fortaleza is one of the major hubs for subsea cables in the world. So in this meeting, we'll have a panel on this topic. This has become increasingly important. The media published that uh, desalinization uh, facility will be organized. This was highlighted in the media, and this is one of the topics that will be discussed in the panel, which will be moderated by Rogerio, my colleague, and I'm sure he has new things to share on this topic. He knows a lot about this topic, and this will be very interesting. Then we have other panels. One is on fair share. That is something that is now in the headlines and what the impact is on the internet. Tomorrow, we'll have a panel on a very important topic. Now, this is about IP address block leasing. So we have a lot of topics that are very relevant. So I look forward to your participation, asking questions, and have a lot of interaction with the public. We're also going to we're also going to have the public policy forum, which is also very important. We're going to have a LACNOG, like Edmundo said, we'll have technical presentations. And then one about site blocking and site blocking. This will be a very relevant panel. And since yesterday, we have been having tutorials and training activities. Today, we're having the opening session, but we yesterday started with training and tutorials. Let me highlight the group on the measurement of the internet group, which met for the first time. Let me also remind you that as a sports person who likes to participate in triathlons, on Wednesday morning, we're having the LACNIC runners. This group has been in place for many years, and the idea is to encourage sports and quality of life. Don't fail to get up early on Wednesday morning to run or jog with us, and you will have plenty of time to arrive here on time. One of the recurring topics we have is that of IPv6, and I must mention this. We have been speaking about IPv6 for quite a number of years already, and we say for sure that this is the way forward for the Internet. So we need to discuss all this issue. We had the IPv6 day, sex day 
activities and attitudes to encourage the adoption of IPv6, but we have to continue insisting on this. Now, speaking about encouraging the adoption, let me highlight the effort of what has been done together with NIC.br in the pre weeks prior to this event. This includes a tutorial we had yesterday, The Path to the Future and Building an IPv6 only network. This is a very important and recurring topic, but this will be present in many of LACNIC's events yet. Now, in the search of synergies with other organizations, LACNIC always finds way of making the most of this event and organize meetings with associates. We're going to have meetings of the first of LAC-IX, of ISOC, and also of LAC-ISP. Now, finally, I'd like to thank Nick BR for being the local host of this event. I'd like to thank the sponsors who always help us make these meetings possible, as well as all the participants, both remote and in person. And I'd like to also thank you for being so active and for helping us to fight for being a free, stable, and secure internet. Welcome to LACNIC 40, LACNOG 2023. Thank you very much. Thank you, Evandro. A big round of applause for the three. Thank you.